The PC isn't all about Windows. Microsoft's world-dominating operating system has been synonymous with PCs for decades, but lately we've been given a glimpse of a world without it. Linux is finally hitting the mainstream, and if you're a gamer on a budget, even one who's never used Linux before, you may be interested in a free, open-source, gaming-friendly alternative to the tyranny of Windows. Chimera OS is a variation on the Steam Deck operating system, running Valve's console-styled gamepad UI front-end over Arch Linux, but unlike the actual Steam OS, it's not limited to the deck. The console's super streamlined interface is designed to work primarily around the deck's controller and touchpad setup, so it makes an ideal match for non-desktop devices like laptops, handhelds, and even DIY consoles like the one I put together recently. If you've seen that video, you'll know I initially planned to run Chimera on that PC, but there was a setback which I'll talk more about later on. Nevertheless, aside from that flaw in the plan, I saw the potential in using this OS for a full-fledged gaming PC. The console equivalent build I put together for that previous video remains the candidate for testing Chimera OS today, running a Ryzen 7 4700G with 16 gigs of RAM and a Radeon RX 6700. A bit of a weird combination, really, that you'd probably never built for yourself unless you were deliberately aiming for the closest specs for PS5. Crucially though, it's an AMD-based system, and while I don't think Chimera's too fussy about your brand of CPU, Nvidia and Intel GPUs are not fully supported. I've seen people attempting to use GeForce cards with Chimera, with varying levels of success, but if you're building your own Linux-based console from scratch, you should probably stick to Radeon. With the CPU locked at 3.6GHz and RAM at DDR4 4000 CL18, it was possible to run everything at 4K 30 to 60 FPS while consuming about 250 watts. If I were to swap out the ATX board for a Mini ITX and install everything in something like a Fractal Ridge or NZXT H1, it's easy to see a machine like this being perfectly at home underneath a living room TV. I should point out before I go any further that I'm a complete Linux noob. If you're looking for advice, I can link a few videos from people with more experience than myself, but I'm afraid I can't really tell you much. What I can tell you is that despite my complete lack of knowledge, by following the instructions on the site I was able to get Chimera OS installed with a bare minimum of fuss. All I needed was a USB stick with the Chimera installer flashed onto it using Bellina Etcher, a process which took only a few minutes. Once the OS was installed, I found the UI simple enough to navigate with just an Xbox Series controller. If you've hit the big picture button on Steam lately, you're already familiar with it, but even if not, then everything should be pretty self-explanatory. For those looking for a more all-round PC experience, Chimera can also be run in a very attractive, minimalist desktop mode, acting like what I presume is a normal Linux distro, though that's outside the scope of this video. I've yet to use a Steam Deck myself, but it's clear to see the handheld's fingerprints all over the OS. Pressing the center button and A on my controller brings up the quick menu with TDP, frame rate, and scaling options, which should be familiar to anyone who's used Valve's popular handheld. These fingerprints are also key to understanding some of Chimera's quirks. The TDP control doesn't actually seem to do anything. Once a game is installed, it's necessary to change to your desired resolution via the launcher, otherwise the in-game menu won't go past the default 720p. Like other variations on SteamOS, Chimera is designed primarily to play Steam games. Unlike others, though, it has the option to connect to your GOG and Epic accounts. However, it's not the most seamless integration. You'll need a second computer or smartphone handy and connected to the same network as the target PC before logging into the relevant accounts and using a web app to install games from those stores. It almost feels like sideloading. 
The final quirk is one of compatibility. The hardware I'm testing is orders of magnitude greater than that used in the current Steam Deck and other handhelds, so you'd think that game compatibility would be better, but there are still plenty of games which simply don't work in Chimera. Fortnite is roughly 33% of the reasons to own an EGS account, and as EGS compatibility is the biggest reason to go for this particular Linux distro, then you might be disappointed to see that there isn't currently a workaround for that game's anti-cheat system. Red Dead Redemption 2 and Horizon Zero Dawn didn't work for me either. The former seemed to get into the game until it had passed the first few splash screens, and the latter wouldn't boot at all, despite attempting to force it to run under different flavours of Proton. Both of these games were installed via EGS, which may go some way to explaining why they didn't start. I've seen Horizon running on Chimera before, so I know the game itself shouldn't be a problem. The Last of Us can manage a 4K30 experience at medium settings, close to 50fps at 1440p, and with some scaling I was even able to get up to 60fps. Weirdly, I noticed a lot of issues with textures and other assets failing to stream properly. I didn't notice any of this in my Windows testing on the same hardware, so this is likely something related to the drivers or the Proton translation layer. The shader compilation stage at the beginning of the game is still there, but compounded by a Vulcan compilation stage, which isn't quite as long, but still, I'd call it egregious. Spider-Man Remastered can manage to hit 60fps at 4K high settings, though only occasionally. It's closer to 50 on average, and even drops into the 40s. Using some scaling helps, though I saw a few weird glitches with DRS enabled. Again, something I didn't see in Windows. I'd go with FSR quality, as it maintains 60 plus most of the time, and still remains in the 50s even on the Empire State Building stress test. Elden Ring does fine, though not as well as I'd have liked, with a resolution of 1620, only pushing FPS into the high 50s, and only hitting a constant 60 by dropping to 1440p. Most of my woes came from trying to play with a Bluetooth controller, as I don't have a long enough USB cable to plug it in. Control was installed from my EGS account via the web app, and ran very well at 1440, with the console equivalent settings according to Remedy themselves, though naturally without ray tracing. More on that later. Turning up to high couldn't maintain a solid 60, and even medium was a little short of the mark, but wasn't objectionably bad. Death Stranding could provide a decent locked 30fps experience at full 4K, though 60 requires using some upscaling. FSR 1 at ultra quality does the trick, and 4K is high enough resolution that you probably won't notice the slight softness that a spatial upscaler can cause. FSR 2 quality is using a lower base resolution to upscale from, but it uses more processing power and so amounts to roughly the same performance and only subtly better image quality, so which one you use is entirely up to you. One game I wanted to try that doesn't quite line up with the others was a legendary one. Among the worst PC ports of its day, GTA 4 has the reputation for being a stuttering mess on even high-end hardware. It's been said that Proton actually fixes many of this game's problems, and sure enough, at 4K maxed out settings and a 60fps cap, it was a smooth experience all round. I noted a couple of minor glitches, the shadow under the not Brooklyn Bridge probably isn't supposed to look like that, I've never actually played GTA 4 for more than a benchmark run so I don't know whether this is just the engine being stretched beyond its intended limits, or a bug from being rendered in Vulcan but I do know that this is an extremely playable experience and far from the stutterfest I've been expecting. The problem with most of these games is what's missing. Not one of the RT-enabled games could offer ray tracing as an option. All but The Last of Us and GTA 4 have ray tracing features, Control especially has a very well-regarded RT implementation, but the OS prevents it from being selectable. For the time being, whatever the cause, I'm told that RT remains a problem that Linux devs have yet to solve.
I'm impressed with the work done on Chimera OS. I'm sure other distros do just as well for gaming, but this is the one I chose to dip my feet into Linux with, and as first experiences go, this has set the bar pretty high. For this kind of convenience, I can even forgive a lot of the shortcomings. For a secondary gaming PC, something to shove under the TV as an ersatz console replacement, I could probably live without hardware ray tracing, and a Radeon GPU would actually be my ideal choice for such a machine anyway. I can't play Fortnite very well with a controller, so that would be something I'd want to play on my main PC, up close and personal with a mouse and keyboard and a monitor that's just a few inches from my face. Sure, I had a couple of problems with EGS games not wanting to boot, but I've accepted that I should probably have bought them on Steam in the first place, and that rather expensive mistake is one I'm slowly correcting. I can make these excuses though, I'm not going to install Chimera OS on my main PC. I'm afraid I'm way too entrenched in Windows. My video and photo editing workflows rely on Adobe and Blackmagic programs, and while learning the way of the penguin might seem like a very enlightened way of approaching the PC, I don't really have time for that. For more experienced Linux users, this looks to my untrained eye like a great middle ground. The Steam Deck-like UI is the headline feature, but the addition of a desktop mode brings the added functionality for those who need it. Overall, I think Chimera is a great project and I look forward to trying it again in the future, when hopefully it's past some of its teething troubles. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.